Alo, Shalom, Salam Tana, Aina is a link, and uh, Shabbat, Shalom, Senbet Salam, Senbet Salam. We want to speak on the daughters of Ethiopia. We want to speak on the Rastafari sister. Originally, this was going to be a message just concerning um, the misuse and the misassumption um, of Empress and the whole Empress ship um, situation that we have in Rastafari. Now, we know that education is the key. That's the teachings of His Imperial Majesty. And we know that some things we have begun to do or we've adopted in a sense um, by tradition or a sense of, quote, culture or this is what other brethren or sisterin have done. So in that way, all of I and I are innocent until the truth has come forward and we know better. Then when we know better, the, the, the question is, what will we choose to do? Will we choose to do better? So we want to speak to the Rastafari sisterhood and to the mothers, daughters, wives, and the, and the sisters in general of Rastafari. Vis-a-vis -vis the empress, the use of this empress thing. You know, we, we have about the empress. We only have one empress. You understand? And when you say, well, this is a Ras and his empress, that is imbalanced. You know, and that is not Ethiopian and Ethiopic. That's not our divine heritage. That is actually a kind of reflection or perversion of what we see within the so-called Gentile world system. For example, we have the, the, the English queen or Elizabeth II, and she is Queen Elizabeth, and her husband is only a duke. And if you look up the Ethiopic titles, you will recognize that Ras, the title of Ras, in the imperial, um, the monarchical tradition of Ethiopia, of Holy Ethiopia, is equivalent to what is known as a duke, a duke within the Eurocentric or the European um, tradition. So what we want to touch on first and foremost is the teaching of His Imperial Majesty. Now, as we did a previous, a previous uh, lecture, a previous uh, shiur of the shiurim, that's the Hebrew for, for lecture, we did a previous lecture, and the previous lecture was basically on Rastafari sons and daughters of Jah. You know, they're not gods in the way that the world um, states it, but the beginning, the initiation for all of I and I as sons and daughters is the teaching of His Majesty, is the testimony of His Christ, is the exact words that His Imperial Majesty has laid out to us in the Gospel of His Imperial Majesty, the good news of Him. Now, this booklet right here, we have produced this particular booklet right here, and this particular booklet um, it summarizes some of the main and major um, utterances of the King of Kings, along with some important notes by I and I in the Society of His Imperial Majesty. And we really recommend that one get a copy of this particular pocketbook and um, pray and, 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 and watch and pray for I and I so we can also produce some of the other booklets that will be on other topical themes such as this, Yah willing, Jah willing, because many of these particular subject matters need to be dealt with also in the written form, so as ones listen and take notes and study like this, they also can utilize some of the other resources that we have, and one can go to I and I um, books page and book site and the website and a lot of free where, share where, downloadable, as well as other books that we produce and, and we publish on important subject matters vis-a-vis I and I education. Because as the King of Kings, Kadamawi Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie I, teaches us education is the key. So let us begin with the words of His Imperial Majesty in this regard. And we're going to introduce into evidence 
we're going to introduce into the evidence the autobiography, book one, of Kedamawi Haile Shalasi. Autobiography, book one of His Imperial Majesty. This is our first evidence that we are introducing. And it's connected with the teaching that we have taught and that we teach on concerning the adoption. What is the adoption? Or Bamarinya Lijinet. What is Lijinet? And how important it is for us to be as children, as little children again. But in order to become as little children, the real initiation or the real starting point is the rebirth is being born again, being born again from above. In order to become children of the Abba, even Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tachin, one must go through Jesus Christos. In other words, it's, it's through Christ, it's through the Christ of his imperial majesty, because that is the one whom our father, the God of Abraham, the God of Yisahak, the God of Yaakov, the triune God, whom he has sent, the Moshiach Yeshua. All right, so let us get into this right here, the autobiography, book one. And we're going to point to two particular areas. One is the, the, um, the Mechadim, right, the Mechadim or the, or the preface, where his imperial majesty states to us right here, in the, in the, which part is this? The fourth part? The fourth part, right? The fourth part where he says, fourth, although there is nothing that is not written in the Holy Scriptures, which is the B-I-B-L-E, the Bible, although there's nothing that's not written in the Holy Scriptures, if you, this is the prayer of His Imperial Majesty, as the Son prayed to the Father, the Father prays, to the Son in the Holy Spirit, in the Isla Iret, the Memphis Caduceus, if you please. He says, if you will enable me to write as I have planned, may our kin and our brothers who will rise up in the future, who will resurrect the rise of Ras Teferi, who will rise up in the future, take note of the words you have spoken, quote, for without me you can do nothing. And that is a quote from St. John's Gospel, chapter 15, verse 5. And may their hearts be convinced that with your help alone, ahadu, ahadu amlak, Yahweh ahad, with your help alone will they be able to do anything. This is the teaching of his imperial majesty. So it's very important for I and I to take note of that word of the King of Kings as true and faithful Ras Teferi. Now the next quote that we would like to make and introduce into evidence is on the next page, which is the introduction, which is the introduction. All right, let, let, let I and I put this down. Amen, amen. And here in the introduction, it is said, let us just go read from the very beginning because it's actually in the third paragraph. So if, you, if the I then would be a with I and I, we're going to read the introduction of His Majesty's autobiography, My Life and Ethiopia's Progress, Bamarinya Hiwetena Ye Ethiopia Erimja, by Kedamawi Haila Shalase. And the introduction here says, whatever the task may be, whatever the task may be, Man may begin it, but he cannot complete it unless God, bless be he, sustains and supports him. If he fails to accomplish the task on which he has set out, having worked to the best of his ability, he is not to be maligned by being called lazy. Thus, we ourselves, have we ourselves, thus we ourselves, by virtue of our descent from the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon, ever since we accepted in trust in 1909, which was 1916, according to the Western calendar, 
first the regency of the Ethiopian realm and later the imperial dignity. Right up to the present, we have set out to the best of our ability to improve gradually internal administration by introducing into the country Western modes of civilization through which our people may attain a higher level. Hence, our conscience does not rebuke us. Paragraph 2. In explanation of the notion gradually, unless it is through coaxing a child and getting it accustomed, it will not be pleased if one takes from it what it has seized with its hand. When one gives such a baby any sort of food, it will not wish to eat it unless one shows it to the child and lets it taste it. Unless they give it milk or other soft food until it grows teeth, it will not be able to eat when they place bread or meat before it. Now, this is interesting that it's Imperial Majesty Ketamawi Haile Shalase. He says these words right here. Because no doubt, if you are familiar with the glory of His Majesty and with the Bible, you will know that in, in the epistle to the to the Hebrews, which is particularly relevant with us as the once lost but now found in Ethiopian Hebrews in the Beta Israel, the once lost but now found I and I. Because this is this is the, the gospel or the explanation, the explication of the good news directly to the faithful among the Judahites, among the black Jews of that time among the, the, the Judahites and the Hebrews and the lost sheep of the Beta Israel. This is why the book of Hebrews is particularly important. Even when we minister to even our Beta Israel who are more Old Testament, overstanding the book of Hebrews, you understand in its true context, and therefore the gospel is very important when preaching or proclaiming Christ and his kingly character amongst the Beta Israel, the Falashas, or even Jews or Old Testament Israelites. All right, so the book of Hebrews is very important, but if you know in the book of Hebrews, in fact, let us just introduce that into evidence as well. We've got a couple of resources that we would like to, you know, share, but this particular lecture hopefully will be on the Rastafari Sisterhood, the Daughters of Ethiopia. You understand? Um, correcting this breach of empressship. You understand? Um, but it doesn't. This is not a. This is not a condemnation to the sisters, daughters, mothers, and wives. Really, it is a a rebuke to the brethren because this this empress. Everybody's an empress, empress, empress. Is something that the brethren knowingly or unknowingly has perpetrated. You understand, and you have to recognize what, what this people have gone through. You understand, in this in this mind control programming, this you know what they call the princess programming, and so forth and so on. And then you go to the empress level. Wow, an empress is a queen of queens. But there's more to it than just name. You understand, and that is not in accordance with the teaching of His Imperial Majesty for I and I as elect Ras Teferi. All right, so point one. Um, let's deal with the book of, book of Hebrews. And no doubt you read in the book of Hebrews. Let's go to chapter five. Chapter five of the book of Hebrews. Now this chapter is very important in many ways, but we're going to, as I say, cut to the chase, and we're going to go to verse 11 to verse 14. Hebrews chapter five, verses 11 to verse 14. It says, well, we'll, we'll put in verse 10, because it says, called, called of God, called of God, because concerning the Son, though he were a son, I'm going forward to verse 8, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Although we are sons and daughters of Jah, we must learn obedience by the things that we suffer. And being made perfect, 
he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. So Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he is become the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. So it's not enough just to hear the good news, but it's to obey the gospel. This is why the judgment must begin first at the house of Jah, at the household of Jah. It must come from there first. So he is, he is made perfect. He becomes the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. Called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. So our Kahin HaGadol in the Hebrew, or Lika Kahinat, is Jesus Christos, is Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior. He's the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. That is the true order of Melchizedek, of whom we have many things to say. We have many things to say concerning Melchizedek, and hard to be uttered seeing ye, you all, are dull of hearing. Now, it's interesting when you start to learn the language. That's why the language is the key for culture, as his majesty teaches, because in even learning the Hebrew language, and similar to the Afro-Shemitic and the Ethiopic, getting to the root, we, we learn that the, the expression hearing is also linked to, as we would say nowadays, and this is what shows who we are, even in our westernized expression. We say, you feel me? Yo, you feel what I'm saying? You feel me? That, that, that word feel me is like, do you hear what I'm saying? And then if it is something towards something to do about it, will you obey? Will you work with me? Will you agree with me? So the idea of the word hearing also has obedience in it as well as it also has, it has obedience in it and, and feeling. You know what I'm saying? And feeling. Also agreement. Is in that word hearing, and that word hearing is significant to us in Deuteronomy chapter 6 and 4 on our Hebraic foundation. That's the Shema, the, the, the Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one, or to say is united, is one. The triune God is one is the one God, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God. And when we even study Christ's um, teaching and his, and, and his prayer for I and I in John chapters, I think, 16, 15, 16, and 17, and elsewhere also, but particularly in those chapters, Christ is explaining that if, if, if they receive the word, his word, his logos, his logic, you understand, if they receive that word, then they receive of that spirit, then he sups with that one who receives his word and seeks the knowledge and the wisdom of his word and spirit and in truth. He sups with them, but as the father is with the son, when the son sups with that one, all of them and all of I and I are one. So it has the individual reference for each of I and I and I and also the collective and that's the root of the church where two or three are gathered together in the I name in Yeshua's name in Jesus Christos name in the Moshiach's name so it says that they are dull of hearing because remember it's connected with that obedience you know like like forgetful hearers they hear it but they forget that what they heard they have to act on and if it's difficult to act on it for spiritual reasons that are beyond the visible, then you pray on it. You pray for the wisdom and you pray for that strength in Yeshua and through Yeshua to I and I, Holy Father. You see, that's all part of the benefits that we have in being born again. It's that relationship. It's that al-kidan. It's that covenant. Yovas. Now it says, for when, for the time ye, y'all ought to be teachers, at the time when all of you should be teachers of this gospel, of this good news, this very same good news, it says, ye have need that one teach you again, teach you in Degonai, and Degonai means again, teach you again, which be the first principles. What are the first principles of the oracles of God? 
What are the first principles of the word of God, the oracles or the words of God or the word of God, the kalat, the kalat sephat, and are become such as have need of milk. You all have need of milk and not of strong meat, not of solid food. You understand? So when we are born again, when we receive that adoption in spirit and in truth and in the proper order, the proper relationship, we are as little children. That's why Christ says, unless one humbles themselves as this little child that he presented in his example, in his parable, you understand? Unless we become as a little child, we cannot enter into the Mengishta Semayat. We cannot enter into the true metaphysical kingdom of God, which we are to be laborers of and bring into manifestation in this earth and on this earth. All right? Now, that part there is interesting because it goes on to say, for everyone that uses milk, in other words, everyone that has to drink milk in a sense, is unskillful or smoothie, if you will, everyone that has to drink a smoothie, is unskillful in the word of righteousness. They're unskillful in the word of righteousness, both in their heart and their mind and in their expression, and therefore also in their actualization, in their akahed, in their halakha, in their walk, in their deportment, in their behavior. Yovas. So that's why there are many who, spiritually speaking, walk funny. For he is a babe. He is a babe. And it's interesting when we really look at the order by studying the words, a babe, right, a babe is below the level of, of, of a child. Understand that. A babe is like the newborn, you know, freshly newborn, you know, like the steam is coming off for the baby. You know what I'm saying? And actually something like that. You know, but it's like that baby is freshly newborn. They have to grow up to that level of being a child, you understand, know in level of son and a daughter on the level of child according to the ancient Afro-Shemitic and the context of these words. That's why language is a key. Not just learning just to talk and conversate and impress people, but in your studies to go and, and look it up, whether it's in the Septuagint, the Greek, you understand, know whether it's in the Masoretic Hebrew or at the higher levels, you know, in the Ethiopic and the Royal Amharic and the Emperor's Bible and His Majesty's Metzhaf Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals. All right? So it says, but strong meat, but solid food, solid food belongeth to them that are of full age. Full age is what? Full age is mature. You know, saying full age is mature. So how do you just start out? and so-called get into Rasta or Rastafari and automatically, boom, you are an empress. Or even for the brethren, you know what I'm saying? You just start out and you're already a Ras. And you walk around, I'm Ras. And you think Ras is about the outer level. That is one who is a babe. You know what I'm saying? Is a babe. But strong meat, solid food belongeth to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use, what's reason of use? Reason, because of exercise, practice makes perfect. There's some hypocrites and liars, whether they call themselves Christian or even some of the Rasas who say, well, nobody's perfect, you know, and nobody's perfect, and yet they call themselves, quote, Christian, or they, quote, call themselves even amongst uh, I and I, Rasta or Rastafari. And to dare utter that, you are not exercising, you're not fully mature. You know what I'm saying? You're acting like you eat strong meat, but really you need to drink smoothie. You need to have it blended down. There's nothing wrong with blending your food, so forth and so on. But overstand the example here. Strong food or solid food belongeth to them that are full age. You will not give a baby um, a, a, a steak or, or food that needs to be chewed and they don't have any teeth. You will not do that unless you're full you know what I'm saying? Or unless you mean to do evil to that babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised. So their senses, not just, not just their, you remember what it says in, in Revelation, it says, he who have ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saves to the churches. It's not talking about this ear. 
not talking about our physical ear. It's not talking about our five senses, our five fleshy linked senses. You know what I'm saying? It's talking about our five wise virgins, our spiritual senses. You know what I'm saying? These must be exercised. The spiritual ear, the spiritual eye, the spiritual sense of smell and taste and, and of touch. This needs to be exercised, right? To discern, to be able to discern both good and evil. You know, one of the interesting things when you study the word, you find out that the Most High, he was very upset with Beta Israel. And he often said because they did not distinguish the good from the evil, the holy from the profane. You know, like, well, we just lump it up into a common category. We don't separate. We're not able to distinguish, you know, from the clean from the dirty. It's like if you did your laundry and you had a whole bunch and a half of it was clean and somebody now went and took the dirty laundry and put it amongst and folded them up with the clean, you know what I mean? I mean, I mean how would that offend you? It's just, it's just laundry. But what about the more essential matters of life in this world and in the world to come? You know what I'm saying? What about the greater matter? That's what it's saying right there. But what's interesting about that example in chapter 5, verse 11 to verse 14, we could go into that in a little more detail, but we want to return to our first exhibit here. And this kind of continues on the, on the um, adoption, the theme of being born again, you know what I'm saying, and how to grow up to him in and through Yeshua HaMoshiach, Jesus Christos, in all things. Once again, his master says in paragraph 2, under the introduction of book 1, of Hiwatena, yeah, Ethiopia, Rimja, my life in Ethiopia's progress. He says, in explanation of the notion, quote, gradually, end quote, unless it is through coaxing a child and getting it accustomed, and the word accustomed, telemedet, you know, um, telemedet, almost like Talmud, but from telemedet means like limad, uh, a habit, a habit, something becomes habitual, something becomes you get used to it, so you practice and you perfect. It's like remembering the Shabbat, remembering the Senbet, to keep it set apart. You know what I'm saying? A time to meditate, reason, study, pray, give praise. You know what I'm saying? But mainly to rest in John and his love and Yeshua, our black Lord and Savior, the Moshiach. So the Shabbat was made for man. Man wasn't made for the Sabbath. There's a benefit both a physical benefit, you know what I'm saying, with our health, with our psychology, as well as a spiritual benefit as well. So as Matthew says that unless it is through coaxing a child, you must coax a child, you must get it accustomed, it will not be pleased if one takes from it what it has seized with its hand. If you snatch from it what it has already seized, you ever try to take something from a little baby, you got something in their hand, and you just try to take it just like that? You, you have to either distract it with something else and let it down and you pick it up. And sometimes babies when they get conscious, they're like, hey, what, what happened to that thing I had over here? You understand? So even then you see how even a, a child, a little child, a babe becomes conscious, a babe grows. So what must we in Rastafari? It says when one gives such a baby any sort of food, any kind of food, it will not wish to eat it unless one shows it to the child and lets it taste it. You know how good mothers would do. You know what I'm saying? And feeders of youths would, would take it and, hey, how you like this, you know? You know, and then the babe would want something you want to eat, and then, you know, like, we'll coax it. You know what I'm saying? Unless they give it milk or other soft food until it grows teeth. Now, when you compare that with what we just read from Hebrews, you can see the instruction of Abba, the instruction of the Father, the instruction of Abba Kedus, Kedus, so he says, unless they give it milk or other soft food until it grows teeth, it will not be able to eat when they place bread or meat before it because it has no teeth to machinate it. And similarly, paragraph 3, and similarly with people who have lived by custom only, and the same is true 
with many of even I and I, even in Rastafari and amongst I and I in this diaspora and in this land that's really not I and I own, you understand, maybe our brethren's land, you understand, but anyway, be that as it may, the same thing with us and black folks. Even today, many years out from so-called slavery, a hundred or so, give or take, you know, of overt slavery, you find the same thing happen where black folks are caught up on tradition. We were watching a PBS program, I mentioned this before, but it's an important issue that we're going to have to, you know, recognize the, the so-called end of AIDS, you know what I'm saying, and Black America was a PBS frontline program. And they said why this word didn't get out to people is because a lot of the people, whether in the Negro churches, were caught up in tradition and custom and this is how we be and this is how we do things and so forth and so on. You know, what his majesty had to deal with in Ethiopia and with Ethiopia at that time is very much similar to the state of the Ethiopians abroad, to the Hebrews, the lost sheeple in the Americas and throughout the Caribbean. So he says, and similarly with people who have lived by custom only, without learning at school, without absorbing knowledge by the ear, or observing and searching with the eye, it is necessary to accustom them through education, through that process that's known as education, to abandon habits by which they have for long been living to make them accept new ways. You know, since I know this, this subject matter about the Empress thing, you know, and as well as other matters of the good news that His Majesty and His Christ inspires I and I and the Holy Spirit to speak on and to teach on, are not easy things, like somebody's going to hear it, and even if they agree with it, like it's going to just change so-called always overnight. You know what I'm saying? But this example of His Majesty is very, very important. So he says, yet not by hasty or cruel methods. This is why we, we have really meditated this particular issue, although we've touched on it here and there in other lectures and other studies and teachings. We've kind of referred to it or made a point here or there. But we don't, we don't want to do it by hasty or cruel methods. You know what I'm saying? But by patience and study gradually and over a prolonged period. So it's with that word of His Imperial Majesty, both the um, word from the preface as well as the introduction of Book One of His Imperial Majesty's My Life in Ethiopia's Progress, that we wanted to begin this particular um, continuation of the adoption lesson dealing with the Sisters, daughters, mothers, and wives, firstly and foremostly. Now, why is that? The reason why we're beginning with the sisters in this, we could say in the, in the adoption or in the new birth and the sisterhood, is because Eve was deceived. See, Adam, he didn't say nothing then. Adam, the, the real Adam, not the whitewash and that other stuff they've been telling us for 400 plus years, but the real one that we learn of in the Word, and we learn of through study and through archaeology and all of that, the African, the black man, you understand? The black man and, and, and the woman and how the first black family, and this is why this particular book also is very, very important. We haven't had an opportunity to teach on it, this one right here. Let's see if we can. We haven't had an opportunity to teach on it um, so much so, but we have made certain references to it, the Gedla Adam the Gedla Adam, or the contest, the conflict, the combat of Adam and Eve against Satan. You know, this, this is a book that goes right in the same category. This particular book goes in the same category as, um, as the Book of Jubilees or the, or, or, or the Book of Enoch, which were ancient scriptures that was known, you know what I'm saying, in such and such time, but only preserved in the Ethiopic, you know, and only preserved among those black Jews and, and Christians, you know, and, and a few faithful among the Mohammedan and, and the Muslims. Now, in dealing with the sisterhood issue, another book that we want to reference as well 
is selected speeches. Because there's another quote that we like to make from selected speeches, the selected speeches of His Imperial Majesty. And all these books and other books are available, are available at the uh, Lion of Judah Society Bookstore, lojsociety.org forward slash um, books. All right. Okay, so I want to touch on this as well. All right. So let's, let, let, let us um, deal with this for un momento ande, un momento, por favor. Okay, so we're going to page two. We're going to, we're going to touch on page two, um, 13. 213. And, and now I think we're more able to get more squarely into this particular matter. So let's put this up here. Um, Rastafari. All right, Rastafari Sisterhood. Because it's interesting, right, that um, when you look at even the brazen serpent, the part in the scripture about the brazen serpent, that because the people murmured, right, because they murmured, Jah sent upon them the seraphim, or the, the fiery serpents, which bit the people, a plague broke out, many people died, many people were sick, you know, and then... Then John had told Moses to lift up the brazen, you know, to make a brazen serpent out of brass and to lift it up so that the people who were, who were bit by the fiery serpents would be healed by looking upon that, that, that brazen serpent raised up. Now, in the New Testament, in the Moshiach, in the Jesus Christos, we have, um, we have... A very important example, I think it's in chapter 3 or chapter 4, where Christ, where our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, where our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMoshiach, where he likens himself to the brazen serpent. He likens himself to having to have to be lifted up and for him to be the salvation to save his people, to save Yisrael, to save Israel from their sins. You know what I'm saying? And to make them be able to do the original, the original aim and object that they were supposed to do before they had been disobedient in the old covenant and went astray. So ultimately, it is to save humanity, but there's even an order. Right, first to the Jew, first to the black, first to the Ethiopian Hebrew, and then to the world. All right, so let us get into this right here. So it's interesting how Yeshua HaMoshiach mentions the brazen serpent in connection with himself and what happened in the wilderness. And we just studied that in the previous Torah portion, which is very interesting. And I hope you all had an opportunity to either watch some of the older videos or just study it on your own and, and do a little bit more homework on the Internet. There's various sites out there, which um, are very, some of them are very interesting. You know what I mean? You, you can test your knowledge, test what you know, even by checking out other sites and other people's opinions and so forth and so on, and then check, check out in the spirit and in the word. You know what I'm saying? Weigh and balance. In other words, practice reason of the use, exercising your senses so you can discern between true and false. It's very, very important. You know, and that is having a, a relationship with God the Father, even on that individual level. It does, not, um, it does not exempt you from corporate responsibility or the communal responsibility, but it helps you to be, in other words, a, 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 a true citizen of the kingdom of heaven, of the kingdom of the King of Kings and his Christ. You know, and you'll know what your duty is. You understand in the communal sense. But first is that individual is the first I, I and I, lining up I with the most high, so that all of I and I, if we all are diligent about the same business and the, 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 the teaching of Christ and his kingly character, the doctrine of Christ, then there should be no, no, no disunity. There should be no inertia. There should be no lack of progress. There should be no mixed-up moves or attitudes unless someone is not having consideration for the brotherhood and for the sisterhood and not doing their homework, you understand, and doing their own work, their spiritual work. And what is that work? 
what is the first work that we are supposed to do? The first work that we are supposed to do is to have faith. That's the first work. He says the work is to believe on the one whom he has sent. But we understand that word believe as we go to our roots in the amen, the, the amen, which means to have true and faithful witness, to accept as true. You do not know it all, but you accept it as true, and then you follow up by studying. You understand? You follow up. You, you, you trust, but then you must verify. You understand? So that you can weigh and balance, so that you can be accountable and be accounted and be accounted worthy because you are being accountable, both on the personal level, the individual level, and on the collective level. So we say in the Rastafari sisterhood, What's the proper name for the Rastafari sisterhood? The proper name is not what you've been hearing, the Empress of Zion, so forth. No, it is the daughters, right, the daughters of Ethiopia. Now, we're going to give you scripture on that. We're going to give you scripture on that in particular. We're going to address this particular book right here that we've been speaking about for for a certain amount of um, lectures and everything, this particular book right here, let's see if we can get some light on this, um, this particular book right here, um, The Ethiopic Legends of Our Lady Mariam, of Our Mother, the Mother of Our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Now, with that being said, all right, with that being said right there, let us um, bring this out as well. So it's the daughters of Ethiopia, right? The daughters of Ethiopia, the Ethio Rastafari daughters. Now also, it's in this book too, one other book also. And some of these books, if you, if you can't afford them right now or, or you just want to read them, they're on the internet. That's the beautiful thing about this particular dispensation that we're in. Um, this particular book here, The Queen of Sheba and Her Only Son, Minulik. The Queen of Sheba and Only Son Minulik give you, give you a, a picture of this as well, a picture of the cover. And, and this book also is published by the line of Judah Society of His Imperial Majesty, right, the LOJ Society. All right? All right. So with that being said, let us move forward. All right? Because some think that we don't speak enough or when we do speak on some levels of women and what's going on in the world and the baby mama dramas and, and other kind of situations. You know, one might think that, oh, we are, you know, we are condemning the sisters, the mothers, daughters, and wives. Some might think so even with this empress thing or even with, you know, what we had to address with um, the Barbara, uh, Makita, Blake Hanna situation, uh, the devil's advocate, that whole devil's advocate thing, so forth and so on. No, this is not, this is not a, a personal condemnation, but it is a judgment, but it's not I and I judgment. It is Jah's judgment. It's his word, weighing and balancing in order to know what is true. Not going on our feelings. You always think of feelings change. As the ancients said, um, feelings make for um, good servants, you always think, but poor masters. You know, one is not directed by the feelings. One, it's like you have servants. You listen to what the servants say, but you have to make the judgment because you are supposed to be the master. You understand? So you have to make the judgment. So you have to be the master of your feelings. You understand? And we only gain mastery of these things in and through our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach, and our faithful obedience, you understand, to the Gospels, the good news of the King of Kings and His Christ, and our conformity, you know, then being formed likewise to the image, the spiritual image of the Son, of Yeshua HaMoshiach, of our black Lord and Savior, the black Messiah, in other words, if you please. All right? And this is basically summed up as the gospel of his imperial match, the good news of Kedamawi, Haila Shalase, Haila Salase first. All right? All right. So, with this Rastafari sisterhood, daughters of Ethiopia, you know what I'm saying? Because, see, the daughters of Ethiopia have become honorable. The daughters of Zion are dishonorable. Now, I know that, that bothers a lot of folks and everything at first, but the teaching is there. The scriptures also shows that as well. 
And we're gonna get on. We're gonna get into that. That's I think in the Queen of Sheba and Only Son Menulik. You can look for the daughters of Ethiopia. We'll go more into um, explicating this sisterhood because this is what all the sisters, daughters, mothers, and wives really need to know. We need to restore. You know, saying the true Kedistim Gilmarium, the true mother of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And this is the true, this is restoring and repairing the breach, repairing the damage that has been done to the black woman. You know what I'm saying? Particularly the black woman, the, the, the so-called African-American, Afro, Afro-Cuban, Afro-Hispanic woman over here. But that damage has also spread like a, like, like a plague globally. Some have been able to resist it faithfully, you understand, and even in some ways culturally. However, all have been infected, you understand, by the whitewash, you understand, and none more so than us as the once lost but now found Beta Israel. So for any to think, if we're talking about, you know, these, these the, the, what we're talking about Babylon and the daughters of Babylon, do not deceive yourself that we're speaking of the daughters of Ethiopia or the Rastafari sisterhood. But like I said, we all have individual work to do. You understand? This is why the Shabbat, the Senbet, this is why overstanding prayer and the principles, the first principles of faith and the oracles of the words of John and the teaching of his imperial majesty is so very important. In other words, take the time to enjoy John's view. Jah's vision. Take the time to enjoy Jah's vision. You understand? We also want to speak on joy too. You understand? Because in this world of so much tribulation, mixed up moods and attitudes and, and impure confusion, it's important that we recognize the role of faith in our psychological, you understand? Our soul. The soul is the psyche. You understand? And many of us have been, have been, have been hurt and afflicted. And, and, and wounded by friends and friend enemies and so forth and so on. And, and we're carrying this, this, these wounds that actually becomes magnetic to the negative forces in this spiritual warfare. And we, we're not going to go into that so much here, but some of you know it. Others that might not know it, take this word you know, and, and, and seek to study some more on it. And if ones want to get some more reasoning on this, just contact I and I, you know, you go to the contact page. In fact, there's a, there's a new page that we're seeking to put online where there's a guest book. And we're going to tell you a little bit more about it, but it's at the lionofjudahsociety.org. It's still being renovated. It's still a work in progress. But once that's there, one can also leave certain, you know, the comments on the, on the Ethiopian World Net gives thanks. But no doubt most of you who are sentient and conscious can recognize that we're not always able you understand, to respond to each and every comment. And we say that if you haven't received a comment there or a response there, either go to the line, the lojsocieties.org and, and put a comment there, or one can put it on the, on the guest book, you understand. And, you know, as laborers and co-laborers, as sons and daughters, you understand, are born into the true kingdom of the king of kings. You understand? Then this, this labor of love that we have to do can become more equally and evenly distributed. But there's nothing more important than first things first. That's why we keep saying that the initiation really is the new birth and is learning and understanding and comprehending the importance of the new birth and of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, of Yeshua HaMoshiach. You understand? And the revelation of Ras Teferi, the reality of it, because there's a lot of lies and dissemination out there, and it doesn't surprise us. It doesn't really bother us at all, because it did say that there would be blasphemers of the Father and blasphemers of the Son. You understand? The thing we caution one, don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. You understand? If you don't know it, then get to know the Holy Spirit. You understand? And you must Watch and pray. You understand? Pray and study. You understand? And have faith. You understand? And we just touched on faith and recognize what faith is. Just to study the word faith is just, is just so amazing when you get into the real root of it. The word believe, be like Eve, that throws ones for confusion. You understand? You know, some of these words and Angles and English, so forth and so on. 
And um, that's why etymology is also a good study, too, have a good um, Webster's Dictionary as you come across different words. You know, sometimes some of us even sit down and have sat down leisurely and just study the dictionary. You know what I'm saying? No big, no big fuss or buzz, but just reading through it and you'd be like, wow, this is what this really means? Then you start thinking and you'd be like, oh, wow, you start seeing the interconnection of things. But let's continue with the Rastafari Sisterhood. And, and this series here on the Rastafari Sisterhood is for the mothers, daughters, and wives. You know what I'm saying? And hopefully it can also help some of the heavily burdened, the heavily burdened sisters out there in the world who might have checked out some of the other videos or, or might be under the false, you know, the false impression, impress, impression, the false impression that somehow, you know, I and I is, is hating on, you know, sisters or whatnot or so because we are seeking to do what the first item did not do. And brethren, you have to learn this too. You have to really recognize the importance of the rebirth for the I and them as well. Because there's a lot of ways that we deal or have dealt with cistern, you know what I'm saying, which are wrong. You know what I mean? If, 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 if you made a reason for repentance, you could think about that one right there when you understand, you know, the high regard that Yeshua HaMoshiach has for his mother, you know what I'm saying, and that the Almighty has for our African sisters, daughters, mothers, and wives. But the first thing is that when you are born again, you're not an empress, you're a daughter. Just like when, for the brothers, when we are born again, we're not really a ras first, no. We, we, we have that as an as a inheritance. We, we are heirs of that, you know what I'm saying, and joint heirs or co-heirs with the Mushia, with Christ, even Christ in his kingly character. But we first become sons and daughters, right? Now, here His Majesty, His Imperial Majesty, in this particular book right here, Selected Speeches, and we have it now available, so you can um, get a copy of it, and I think there's also digital copies as well out there. Um, if one is looking for it and whatever, just hit us up on a contact right there. But anyway, the message is to woman, it was the woman's seminar. His Imperial Majesty, Kadamawi Haile Selassie, Haile Selassie the first was delivering a message to the women's seminar. And this is under Inter-Africa. Inter-Africa, page 213, right? And the original word utterance was given December 14, 1960. His Imperial Majesty says, Africa has accepted the challenge of the modern world, and with it come grave responsibilities. Many discouraging hours will arise before the rainbow of accomplished goals will appear on the horizon. African civilization in its potential magnitude must be able to command fortitude, patience, tolerance, and diligence. To sustain us in all our tasks, we count on the woman of Africa, on the woman of Africa, without their relentless vigilance. No aspect of our responsibilities can be attained. Woman's role has never been so demanding. And you can be proud to answer this call for the betterment and future of mankind or of humanity. Ethiopia welcomes you and wishes you Godspeed in your deliberations. Amen and amen. Now, let us... You know, read, reason, and rise, the three R's. Read, reason, and rise, the three R's of the society. So we read it first. Let's reason on it for a moment so we can rise in a, in a consciousness or a, a standing and an overstanding of it, or at least an understanding. Africa has accepted the challenge of the modern world, and with it come grave responsibilities. I mean, need we show you a, a summary 
of just the, 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 the 20th century, not to mention in these 12 so-called years of the so-called Western um, world uh, um, new millennium, just to see, just to, just to recognize this in its fullness, the state of Africa, Yorubas, and many of us AWOL, you understand, from that interconnection with Africa, you understand, and how that affects our whole economy, you understand, and, and how we are missing an opportunity. But there's many grave responsibilities. He says, many discouraging hours will arise before the rainbow of accomplished goals will appear on the horizon. There's many discouraging hours, and I think my brothers and sisters, I know we're in a, a discouraging hour right now. You know, I mean, even when we speak about the Ethiopian World Federation, just for example, and, and this kind of links with this because there are two different empresses or sistren who are, you know, trying their best in whatever way that they are to um, – deal with the situation of the organization from their best understanding. But, it, you know, it, it's kind of split on a certain level, but it's women who are even trying to do their best to repair this breach while the sons, you know, the sons are watching and choosing, well, I'm with this system, but that's, it's just interesting but, but, but how it connects with, you know, the role of African women even in this present time. But he says, many discouraging hours will arise before the rainbow of accomplished goals will appear on the horizon, on the horizon, on the horizon, before it appears on the cheruzon, before we reach that cheruzon, the true cheruyan, the true chosen level. You have to remember, many are called, few are chosen, right? But it's because few choose. They are called and they come forward but they never take that conscious, you know, like the Shema in, 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 in the Old Covenant or the foundation of Judaism, where we say Shema Yisroel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Achad. You, you know what I mean? When, when we make that declaration, it means something. Even when the Ethiopian eunuch made his declaration, you understand that, that he has faith, he admits that Jesus Christos, that Yeshua HaMoshiach, is the Bain Ha Elohim. He is the son of the living God. He didn't have to take the Shema again because he already is a Hebrew. That's why he was in Jerusalem at that high, holy, uh, Shalosh Regalim time. This is what the Gentiles always miss. They try to say that that Ethiopian, the Ethiopian eunuch was a Gentile. No, 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 no. He was there for what purpose? He was there in the high holy days, he was celebrating. He was a Hebrew, or you can say he was a Jew. You understand the Ethiopian eunuch was a Jew, or a Hebrew. Let's say as a Hebrew, if you will, but a Judahite as well. But he says, we're going to have these discouraging hours, and we're in a time which is potentially um, discouraging. But see, here's where I and I face. You understand? And building up. You understand? I and I faith. I and I holy faith. That means to set apart. You understand? Not to be mixed up or mingled or confused with things which don't belong to it, which are not a part of it. You understand? It's like if you don't ground, you know, if you don't ground the system, what happens is that it can short circuit. And what we're seeing is short circuit, and with short circuit, there's burnout. So, so many vibrant and, 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 and vigilant and diligent in their, their, their ways, brothers and sisters, have experienced that. You understand? Even within the gatherings, you understand? Or the lack thereof, even in the lack of organization. Or one saying, I and I not deal with organization. So you deal with this organization. See, we can't run from it. Society is organized. You understand, a household even is organized. The kingdom of the kingdom of the king of kings and his Christ is also organized. You understand? And if we feel that we've been left behind somehow, it's because we're not participating. You understand, getting informed, getting involved, participating in that organization of the king of kings and his Christ. Because it's not the, 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 the organization. 
whether it's this organization, that organization, federation, whatever, it's not the organization. It's the people, especially for us if we're not in our divine heritage. So we don't have that spiritual power. So as his majesty prayed that we would make note of the word which Yeshua HaMoshiach has spoken. Without me, ye can do nothing. You understand? So we see without Yeshua, without Jesus Christos, you understand, prominently and in, in the proper relationship in Rastafari and among the Rastafari consciousness, this is why we're in, the, in, in these disturbing hours that we're in, and to those who resist, they get glimmer and glimmer or dimmer and dimmer. You understand? But many discouraging hours will arise before the rainbow. You understand? Now, what is it like? It's like a flood. Notice, notice the example of his imperial majesty is speaking to it as though it is a flood. And it did say in the latter days there would be a flood, a flood of ungodly waters. So, you, you know, you can just look at the news, you know what I'm saying, or look around, and, and, you, and you see it. It's all around, and it's like it's, it's, like it's normal. The, the Bible says that, um, you know, all nations that forget God are turned into hell. You know what I'm saying? So it's almost, like the, it's almost like the underworld, so to speak, has now become the overworld. And on a spiritual level of the mechanics, it's exactly what has happened. You know, um, let's, let us move forward, right? So there's that flood idea, that's that rainbow, there's that Noah's Ark kind of idea. You know, understand? before, you know, these accomplished goals begin to appear on the horizon. And, you know, that's a whole, there's, you know, there's much that can, you could go into that and even meditate and see much more in this word. This is some basic reasonings on this right here. He says, African civilization. You understand that word civilization? African civilization. Civilization is organized. Civilization is an organization. You know what I'm saying? And we have our own civilization. African civilization in its potential, potential, potential magnitude must be able, you know, it must tap into that ability. And we have that ability, but it's khatiyat, it's that sin, it's that, it's that systemic anomaly from the beginning that caused the black race to fall like the fall of man, like the fall of Adam, that still blocks us and prevents us from reaching it. So that, 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 that wall of separation must be brought down. You know what I'm saying? It's only brought down in the Moshiach. It's only brought down in the black Messiah, in our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. Because if you don't recognize he came in the flesh and exactly what sort of flesh he came in, then you are not, not in the truth. So maybe you're a little bit free, but you're not fully free. Because who the Son has freed is free indeed. Awoo. Now, he says that African civilization in its potential magnitude must be able to command. To command. But see, his majesty teaches us also elsewhere in his selected utterances. He teaches us elsewhere that we all, you understand, have a, uh, an opportunity for leadership. But then he also says that the best leader, in order to be a good leader, one in a sense must be a good follower. And, and you know, this thing has crept in among some rosters and among some of I and I, and maybe there was a reason for it at the time, but with, with true illumination, with the light of His Majesty's teaching, there's no longer a reason for it. It's like, I and I not follow now, I and I not follow, or we say we follow Hala Selassie, but then Hala Selassie speaks of His salvation, Jesus Christos. He speaks of the Bible to I and I. And even and even has given us, overstand the book of the seven seals, even has given us his own metaf kedus. You understand? And we need to, you know, coordinate and get these printed up because the enemies are trying not to print his majesty's Bible anymore. You know, they're trying to palm off other Bibles as his Bible. And even if you get one of those other Bibles, you understand, use it as practice. Recognize what it is, but use it as practice. You know, saying this, this is still available. His Majesty's Bible is still available, you know, on the Internet, in other versions, you know, online, so forth and so on. Um, but we'll get into that a little bit more. But, so we have to be, become good followers 
of the one to be followed, Yeshua HaMoshiach, according to the teaching of his majesty, and then we can learn to, to command. We have to be under command or in command, you understand, or, or really under the commandment, you understand, we're not under the law, you understand, but the commandment is what we move in. If we move in in the spirit, then we move in the law of, of the spirit of life in Christ, yes, it's, you know, so we so so it's a spiritual thing. It's written in our heart. It's like in our DNA. So so it, it's not so much we read it and say we got to do it because it's written there. But when we see it there, we say, well, that's quite natural. That's quite natural. That's the way it should be. You know, you know what I'm saying in that sort of a way. But we have to be able to command fortitude. What is fortitude? So when you come across these words, you might have an idea. But just go look it up. Just look it up in a good Webster's Collegiate Dictionary because the etymological brackets are very important. You know what I'm saying? But still look it up. What is fortitude? The Bible speaks about fortitude. We have to have that firmness. You understand? Know that we have that firmness, like a fort, just like a fort. You know, like a fort. It, that, that means that we are protected. You know what I'm saying? That we are protected. We're strong. We can take on attack. You know what I'm saying? We can we can give even better than we got. You know what I'm saying? But fortitude, like a fort. You know what I'm saying? We are soldiers for the King of Kings and His Christ. Patience. Patience. It says patience is the faith of the Kedusan. So we are truly Rastafari. Each of us is a Kedus by virtue of principle, by virtue of the oracle, by virtue of the word. Now, whether we are living up to that separation, you see, that's a personal recognition. You got to check, each of us got to check our and I selves. You know what I'm saying? We should regularly do that. And when we regularly do that, you know what I'm saying? The Father gives us strength and more strength to even overcome. You know what I'm saying? And things that seem difficult become easy and easier. Now, he says patience, tolerance. Now, tolerance is interesting the way tolerance is used in the world. But I look at tolerance as the teaching on um, turn the other cheek. Remember to turn the other cheek? In the true context, it's speaking about tolerance among I and I. You know what I'm saying? Because we are like a family. You know, if you have brothers and sisters, you love them, but some things, you know, so forth and so on. So you have tolerance, but you still practice the way, the truth, and the life. You know what I'm saying? Even when you might feel differently, but you have to check that feeling as not being like Christ. You know what I'm saying? So you have to put that on the altar. You have to have that altar. You have to have that change. You're know saying into into his likeness or burnt away or, or, or dealt with. Otherwise, it'll cause you to stumble. You know what I'm saying? Sooner or later. Right? And then he says, and diligence. Diligence. You know, the word diligence, each one of these particular, he, he, he puts four words. He said, command, fortitude, patience, tolerance, and diligence. Each of those, like a square. Can you circle the square? Can you square the circle? You, do you understand how these words go together? Some might think it's just any word he used. No. His majesty is very, very precise in the words that he used, especially if you can fact check it along with the Amhari, because sometimes some words, English is not always apropos, you understand, for translation. But the, the imperial translators have done a wonderful job, Edward Uhlendorf too, on their translations of the royal Amharic of the pure language. You understand? But to study these words, now it comes to our Ras Teferi sisterhood, to the daughters of Ethiopia. You all right? And it says, um, to sustain us, to sustain us. Now it's interesting the word sustain, because in the Ethiopic, the primordial name for Yahweh, the primordial name for Elohim, Ha Elohim, the true God, the triune God, was Egeziabihir, 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 right? And in that name, Egezi, from Ageze, Ageze, Ageze means to sustain, to support, you know, in, to, in a sense to help, but the, 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 the best, um, the best, translated word when you understand all of its levels, the highs and the lows, is sustain. The word sustain, because as you check out that word sustain, when you talk about sustainability, only Jah's way is sustainable. You know what I'm saying? Only Jah's way is sustainable. Jah's ways bring the fire, 
You know what I'm saying? And it's still pure after the fire done, 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 bun. You know what I'm saying? It's still, you know what I'm saying? Because it is that AU. You know what I'm saying? It's a true African union, if you understand. To sustain us, he says, to sustain us in all of our tasks, we count. That word count, too, is important. Accountability, number. We count on the woman, on the woman, the wuma of Africa. We count on the woman of Africa. That Sister Wanga Amatai, she has passed on may job bless her soul, but she's one of those who, who started the, the African tree planting. You know, well, I mean, I started it, but she really gave it a new voice and took it to a, a greater level where even other women in Africa started planting those trees in Africa. Then you think, you say, wait, where are our daughters of Ethiopia, where is I and I Rastafari sisterhood, you know what I'm saying, in that regard, on the homeland, you know what I'm saying, and, and the reason why is because we have to get first things first, you know what I'm saying, and the first things first is I and I faith, you know what I'm saying, it, 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 it's that, it, it, it's that root, that, that ground root and the initiation of being born again, you know what I'm saying, and overcoming, you know what I'm saying, overcoming a lot of this, a lot of this, um, this, uh, uh, this burden, this, 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 these evils, you know, that we have in the, in the old life or the flesh life, the, the, the non-regeneration, you know, and all this degradation that has been done to us in spirit, in our soul, in our psychology, and in our body. You know, when I look at this in Gomarium, it, it, it helps heal my heart and mind when I think about how to make a slave, Willie Lynchism, and what was done to the black woman. And the fact that this was...